It's a pleasure to be here with you today to discuss mobile stroke units and their role in stroke systems of care. Mobile stroke units bring the hospital to the patient. These units are specialized ambulances with CT scanning technology. Our clinical team at UCLA Health MSU is composed of a vascular neurologist in person or by telemedicine, a firefighter paramedic, a critical care nurse, and a CT technologist with laboratory capability of performing point of care, 10, 8 plus, and coagulant check. The imaging capability of our eight slice CT scanner is able to not only show us the parenchyma or tissue of the brain, but we're also able to ascertain the health of the blood vessels of the brain using CT angiography. And to a very limited capacity, CT perfusion reproduces one slice through the brain. In terms of treatment capability after diagnosis for ischemic stroke patients, we are able to give IV thrombolysis with TPA early in the field prior to arriving to the hospital, as well as now more recently with Connect the Place for TNK, which has a very great advantage of giving a one-time bolus with no continuous. For hemorrhagic stroke patients, we're able to decrease the burden of hematoma expansion by starting IV medications for blood pressure control, such as nicardipine, and for patients on anticoagulation, reversing hemorrhages with Kcentra and DEXA and other medications. Other treatments for acute neurologic emergency include anti-epileptic medications, uh, anti-medics, antihypertensives, and so forth. 10 years ago, the world's first mobile stroke unit was launched in Berlin, Germany, and in Hamburg, Germany. In 2011, the first scan happened on a patient in the field, being able to understand the pathology of the, the brain damage at the time in the ambulance prior to arriving to the hospital. And 10 years later, eight cities were wild and over 2,500 patients. We now know that mobile stroke units improve care and stroke patients over standard of care transportation. This is based on two primary pivotal trials. One was called the Be Proud trial that was published in JAMA 2021. This happened in Berlin, Germany. In this study, over 1,500 patients were enrolled and looked at the association between the dispatch of mobile stroke units to patient care acutely uh, and their functional outcomes relative to patients who are transported by normal mechanism. And again, in Berlin, they have three mobile stroke units covering their city. And they found that patients do statistically significantly better in terms of clinical outcomes with mobile stroke unit care over standard care. The sister study of this pivotal uh, type of uh, trial is the BEST MSU trial. And this was conducted in the United States and the results of which were presented at the International Stroke Conference in 2021. There were seven major US cities which participated in this trial, including Los Angeles. And what we found is that patients also benefit greatly by treatment on mobile stroke units versus standard care. For example, showing you now some slides from Dr. Grada's talk from ISC 2021, looking at MSU patients and when they were treated versus standard care patients and when they were treated with IV thrombolytics. MSU patients were able to get treatment within the golden hour, 30% more than standard care management patients as you can see here. Looking at logistical regression for modified Rankin zero to one and logistical regression propensity scores for modified Rankin zero to one, there was a statistically significant difference between patients treated on mobile stroke units early versus later in the emergency department by standard management. The good news is that there was no difference in safety outcome that was noted and no difference in symptomatic SAH, ICH. In terms of time from last known well time to TPA bolus, percentage of 90 day MRS zero to one in MSU patients versus standard management patients, we believe that these positive results were driven by golden hour patients. Looking at benefit per hundred and number needed to treat for mobile stroke units, uh, looking at ordinal MRS versus bicanamide MRS, you can see here that approximately 27 patients will benefit per hundred of patients treated overall and making the number needed to treat 3.7. To compare treatment magnitudes, treatment modality comparison, looking at IV TPA given at zero to one and a half hour versus no IV TPA given uh, at all, 
benefit per 100 was about 27 patients. In TPA given a later time point, one and a half hours to three hours versus no TPA, the benefit per 100 was 20.5. And patients given TPA later time window versus no TPA at all, about 13 patients will benefit. This is the benefit from early MSU thrombolysis versus later ED thrombolysis. 27 patients will benefit per 100 treated. This is very significant. To conclude the results of the best MSU study with regards to TPA treatment, 17 more, 17% 17 more were treated with TPA versus in the emergency department. In terms of golden hour, 30 more percent were treated within the golden hour from last known well time. With regards to outcomes, patients significantly improved a uh, given treatment mobile stroke unit versus later in standard emergency department setting. And with regards to modified ranking zero to one, 10% more patients were able to reach that in the mobile stroke unit group. And no safety issues were noted and uh, recorded of 9% mimics and 2% symptomatic ICH in each group. The healthcare utilization and the cost analysis for these types of units and how they can contribute to patient care and overall healthcare costs is still ongoing. IVTPA is one of the benefits of mobile stroke units where you can be able to get to the patients fast, but mobile stroke units can be used beyond IV thrombolysis. This is an example of a run of one of our mobile stroke unit patients. This patient was diagnosed in the field with intracranial hemorrhage. He had a LAM score of one. His uh, propensity of symptoms were only aphasia. He actually walked out of his house to the, to the ambulance. And uh, had we not had the scan, this patient would have gone to a primary stroke center. Because of conclusive diagnosis, he ended up going to a comprehensive stroke center, which is able to, to um, give him neurosurgical evaluation. And in terms of IV, uh, uh, beyond IV thrombolysis and looking at thrombectomy for large vessel occlusions, this is another patient who was diagnosed in the field with a CTA occlusion in the left distal MCA, M1, M2 division. This patient was pre-notified to the uh, receiving center and received thrombectomy. What you see here in this video now is the stent retriever, solitaire stent retriever being pulled through an intermediate catheter pulling the clot that was once occluding this blood vessel. In a moment, you'll see the result of that. Here you see the clot and the stent retriever after the thrombectomy procedure, with now the blood vessels open. Again, MSU has the potential to expedite endovascular care. This is the same patient with the MSU CTA pre-thrombectomy, so it's showing the cutoff here at the distal M1, M2 junction. This patient received IVTPA uh, 13 minutes from admission to mobile stroke unit, with, and she received IVTPA 62 minutes, almost within the golden hour from last known well time. This is the great advantage for CT angiography in the field. The angiography team, the neurointerventionalists, knew ahead of time of this patient because we pre-notified them. They were ready with the angiography suite and where we aim for hospital door to groin or door to puncture time of less than 60 minutes, this patient and the team was able to achieve a groin puncture of 24 minutes, which is extremely significant. And this is, you see again, comparing the CTA in the mobile stroke unit before thrombectomy. And in the second panel here, you see the CTA after thrombectomy with return of blood flow to that tissue at risk. And here's again, the solitaire stent retriever and the clot retrieved. This is the patient who presented with hemorrhage. His initial stroke scale was eight. He had aphasia and, aphasia and facial droop with a LAMP score of one. And as I recounted, this patient was otherwise motorically doing very well and actually walked to the ambulance and sat on the gurney himself. He was admitted within 40 minutes from his last known well time. We had hyperacute initiation of antihypertensives. We loaded with antiepileptics. And this patient was rerouted to comprehensive stroke center from primary base uh, based on conclusive imaging diagnosis. Mobile stroke units can also be scaled within systems of care. This is an example of geospatial mapping of stroke occurrence in Los Angeles County with the darker colors here showing the higher stroke in incidence in these pockets. And with this type of research showing where strokes occur and where mobile stroke units are needed most, we can actually strategically place mobile stroke units 
to have access to patients when they need it most. I hope that I was able to convey to you the importance of mobile stroke units and how they can integrate within our system of care, not only for IV thrombolysis, but for the diagnosis of hemorrhage and other neurological emergencies. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time.